So Chino, tell me, what was today's angle? dame el paso hacia el lado con esa. What was today about in terms of the sparring? What were you trying to uh, get jab accomplished? And jab and defense. I don't need power. I don't need. I'm using a jab, defense, and angles. That's and I kept I hearing you tell him in Spanish, uh, not too hard up top. Yeah, I don't need. If he wanted to go hard, to go hard down low. I, I, I don't need power. We, I know he displays power. I'm more, I'm more, I'm more, I'm more focused on, on movement. That's what he needs. That's the reason why I came up this way. I sell as a beautiful boxer. He gives me a lot of different angles. Julian gives me so many different looks. So, I don't know if you notice that he goes in and, and between spurs of the moment, he just stays there. That's what my seller was able to capitalize with one too. So, I got to get him on that. That's the reason why I came up this way. So, you could get that kind of work. On top of that, you know, all of my guys are too tall. I need that 5'7", five, 5'6", five, kind of sparring. But what I saw today was great. His balance improved. Defense is improving. His jab is improving. If I could get Jason the way I, I, I know that I will in time to be very elusive, very short defensively, where he gets more comfortable that he's going to be able to place himself in different angles, when he puts power shots, it's, it's going to be just beautiful to watch. Now, what are some of the upsides um, of you using guys as heavy as Julian Rodriguez and Marcelo? Marcelo being a 135 pounder and Julian almost 147. What perks is it for Sosa, who's only 130, to get in there with someone that big? Well, I'll tell you the truth, it's difficult for me to find somebody who's 140 pounds to spar him. Um, I normally gotta get heavier guys because he, he just hits too hard. Look, to give you better, a better understanding, when he spar his teammates, I put 18 ounce gloves. They use 16, he used 18. What was today's ounces? 16. Yeah, I put 16. I mean, so I'm, I'm close. I was, I was doing 10 rounds. I did 10 rounds three times with 18 ounce gloves. Yeah, I mean, so he hits hard. And believe me, if I let him lose all the time, like the average time he's going to hurt somebody. Did you have any issues with the stamina? It seemed like when Julian got in there, he was already kind of no, going down in terms of his output. No, what happened was today, this morning, I ran them real hard. And I ran them up in Gabriel Myers, which is everything is uphill. So I, him, same thing with him. I know, I seen his Instagram post, yeah. and I thought to myself, damn, Gino told me he runs them after sparring. That's correct, but he wanted to run early. So, and normally, he runs on the treadmill. So he said, I want to go ahead, I want to go enjoy this weather. I said, you show sure? my face? I said, I said, we're sparring today. I never, normal, I never run them before sparring. I, I always run them before, after the sparring. So, but it was his choice. So, in the fourth, in the fifth round, he's like, I feel the legs now. So, I said, good, let's just push. But he's in great shape, so I don't worry about it. So is that, like, being as though he did it backwards and he's feeling it, is that still a good thing because pain means that you're working the muscle? 100%. That's, that's a really good thing. Because guess when he thinks he's, like, in awesome shape, a little, we, we do something that's a little bit different and he sees the, the after effects. So, you know, it works both ways. So for the rest of the week, what, what's the agenda? Like, what do you guys... Now, tomorrow, uh, it's swimming. Oh, swimming. Yeah, tomorrow we do swimming. We do sprints and swim tomorrow. Beautiful workout here. Then Thursday, I will run. I just do it today because he won. Tomorrow, Thursday, I run them afterwards. You see the different Thursday. Same sparring partners Thursday? Yep, uh, this is why I'm here. Julian and myself. That's what I want. It's a perfect sparring for me. For what I, so what happened with Lewis Cruz? I use them maybe, you know, they show him, but my main concern is Julian and, and myself. They are the perfect sparring for me. They're the one who's going to help Jason look amazing November 12th. Why exactly? Because when you think of Julian, you don't think of Stephen Smith. No, but you know what? Julian gives you a lot of different little angles. Stephen Smith, if you look at some fights, he turns you. You know, because he likes to fight in the phone booth, but he turns. And the reality is that he has the better amateur background than Sosa, so he feels more comfortable. So Sosa needs to build that. You know, like I spoke to you yesterday, you only have three amateur fights. So he's learning in the professional world. Now, is there any worry? Today there were spots, like you said, where he just stood there. Marcelo was able to capitalize. Yes. In the UK, the fighters usually throw a lot of punches. That's correct. And even if they don't land, well, this one is happening in Monaco, actually, so it's not a big crowd to speak of. But usually in the UK, you know, they land a, a couple of flurries and everyone goes crazy. Yeah, 25,000 plus. Yeah, but you know what? This is why I'm here. So Marcelo and Julian could help me correct the little flaws that he has. 
by the time I leave, he won't have, he won't, he won't be no, no steady target. I mean, it's this, you know, it's something new for him to get used to because he's just, he's used to being a bully. So, and in reality, learning doesn't work that way. When you fight somebody who's small, who will, I box you. So now he's learning, you know, just to a defense, a good balance, you know, a good jab off that. Before, he used to push his jab. And I don't know if you saw, there was spurs in between time, but he stays dead in the center, he will push the jab. Actually, then one time he, twice, he, le he, he leaped over with the right, Marcelo Conde with the, with the hook. Those, that's the kind of sparring that I need. Because if nobody corrects that, so he, he thinks it's normal. You know what I mean? But the fact that he's seen that he's making these errors and Julian capitalized on whether it's going to be Marcelo. So psychologically, he's here. Oh, I can't do that. You know what I mean? So I got to run how to cut my distance with my defense short, my feints. If you saw today, the feints, plenty of times with the feints he did, Julian or Marcelo, he was able to freeze him. And those are the things that we're learning added to his offense to make them much better. That's a, it's a lot of work to continue doing with the young man. And every fight, I expect, I expect for him to get better and better. This fight, he will be better. Speaking of capitalizing, uh, Julian hit him with a few Beautiful good shot. body shots. Beautiful body shots. Where you, he won't go, the, he ain't folding, huh? He ain't folding. He ain't folding. I mean, yo, body shots is body shots. People go down, man. Uh, a lot of people, but he don't fold. <laughs> he don't fold. The will that that kid has is amazing. I felt those body shots. I did I too. Even. I was over there like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> I, I even asked Ju I asked the trainer, Ju I said, yo, you guys was going pretty hard. I thought, you know, sparring was to work on No, things. they work. I don't work. I don't work. So it's not like that. You know this. I hold them back. I mean, I mean, because this is family. Now, they bring me somebody from New York, I give them green light. Do you? It is family. I mean, so, you know. But for the first day back, you're happy with the way he looks? Outstanding. Yes, that's a lot of beautiful things. Number one. A lot of great things. So um, next Thursday, you see that you see a little bit more improvement, more consistency. Saturday, I mean, you're gonna be part of the camp with us. It's gonna be awesome. I'm excited. So you're gonna see the growth. You know what I mean, so by the time we're done, you'll be like, wow, I see what you know. We talk about from then to here, three weeks and a half. Bro. It looks amazing. Is it is it always two and four, or do you ever do like two? I mean, three and two. No, actually, eventually I'm gonna do three. Yeah, three and two. Oh. Four, four, and four. Oh. <laughs> When four four rounders? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, well good. Okay. Yeah, my my mindset. I, I work. My condition is amazing. With my guys, I do things differently. Now, and and this is not to probe. This is to ask genuinely. Like, how does a trainer know when not to take their fighter too far? You know, they, you get that cliche in boxing. You know. Um, he, uh, don't leave it in the ring or you know he left it in the gym on fight night it's like oh he looks flat because he left it all in the gym well you know as you see him spar if you see an example if you see uh we do 12 rounds so i do 12 with julian uh, four, four with, with jay four with myself and four with, with Luz cruz and if i see that he's starting to fatigue where he's getting extra punishment, I'll stop the sparring. Because at that particular time, I'm not doing him no justice. You know what I mean? By letting him get hit, when, you know, because his condition is not where it needs to be. Now I see the growth. If I see by the sixth round, he's getting stronger. That's the condition I built. Second round, he gets stronger, stronger, stronger. That's what I do with him. So if I see him by the, by the uh, tenth round, I see where he's at. I, I keep it going. Because you're 100% correct. A lot of trainers, they leave it in the gym. Then they go out there. Up to this day, through all the years I've been involved with my cousin Oscar Suarez, um, I have never had that problem. So I, I have, see well, this is the way I work. Everybody works different. If I do a camp with Fosa or, or Tevin, right? And my camp is outstanding. I'm not changing my camp. Yeah. There's no need for me. So I know exactly what to do, how to cut the weight, and how to bring them back to a regular condition. A lot of people want to try different, do different things, and that's how they mess up fighters. I mean, that's what happened with Gary Russell. When Gary Russell fought, well, Machenko, Machenko, he took he a strength strength conditioning, conditioning coach. They killed him. Strength conditioning doesn't know what you're doing, so at the end of the day, you know what? It affected him. And I guarantee you in a rematch, it will be a different fight, because I see Gary now. I mean, I know it will be a different fight. You know, Machenko got somebody who was overworked. His muscle was fatigued. Same thing when, when um, um, Pritchard Cologne. If I was training Pitcher Colon, he would have never fought that fight. That kid fought seven times in one year. That body's there. I don't care how young you are. It doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Especially out of those out of those seven fights, two he went ten rounds. That body's fatigued. They killed that kid. That kid's in a coma because of, of, of management and training. Not knowing what the fuck they're doing. Excuse my friend. So talk to me about your amateur. He was definitely 
landing some, some strong, powerful a, shots in there. First day of sparring. I had him running in the mind, so he's like, pop, I feel my legs. But he pushes. The, the world of this kid is amazing. He's, I'm teaching because... Now, he was sparring with another amateur, right? Yeah, with an amateur, yes. But yeah, my man's not another amateur. But what I like about him, which I'm trying to teach him, if you hit me with a good shot, because he knows he's strong, so now he wants to bend with you. I mean, he can take a hell of a shot. But so he, it's tip for tap for him. Yeah, tip for tap, and I'm trying to teach him. He's too skilled for that. He got you a good shot, that's okay, we set. You know? So you said that the uh, targeted timeline to turn him pro is December 4th? 2nd. 2nd. Yes. So right now I got two nationals that I'm going to take him. One I won't be able to be that he's going with Melman, which I'm glad I'm here because Melman him, so they could become buddy buddies so they could support each other in you know, the nationals. And then the next one is when I get back. That'll be uh, November 18th, which that's when he turned 18. November 18th.